Okay, welcome to part two of chapter two, uh, talking about individual neurons. And now we're going to try to figure out how to simulate uh, individual neurons on the computer using what we know about the details of the biology. To situate this, I just want to start off by reviewing our uh, detector model. This is uh, one of the models you'll look at in this chapter. This receiving neuron will look at, you know, receive these different input patterns and respond to those input patterns. So here we see a pattern of neural activity in the input. Uh, the height of the block represents the activity of the neuron. Uh, you can the color is mapped onto this color scale redundantly, so you see that these are very active neurons, and we see this visually as the letter zero, or the number zero. And we keep going, blah 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 blah. The neuron is unimpressed with all of these various digits, and finally, there at ch at uh, the number eight, it finally gets activated, and you can see that the receiving neuron went whoop. And it says, I like that. I've detected the digit 8. Great. Isn't that exciting? Well, why did it respond that way? This is really the most important point that I want to emphasize. The neuron responds and detects what its weights have encoded about the input. We see the synaptic weights, the patterns of synaptic connection, from the, the input sending neurons to this receiving neuron. And again, they're in the form of the digit eight. That's why it responds to the eight. We just hand set those. It's, we're not talking about how learning worked or anything like that. It's just a very simple demonstration of what it means to detect something. And so essentially what that means is that where there is a high synaptic weight, the receiving neuron receives a lot of excitation. It gets very excited, and the total amount of excitation is shown in this GE value, um, and you can see that that's very high. Um, that means the total excitatory conductance is what GE means. And if we go to other cases, now in the input we're seeing the digit nine, that does not give it rise to as much excitation. And that amount of excitation remains below the threshold for firing these action potentials, which is what this act variable represents, is the amount of firing that this neuron is exhibiting. So this is fundamentally the process of detection as it is exhibited in the neurons that we're going to be using in the course. And our job now is to understand what are the equations that we need and that real neurons essentially are implementing to perform this process of detecting. If we change the amount of leak or inhibition in effect that the neuron has to contend with, it makes it respond more liberally or more easily to these inputs. And so here you go, you can now see that this neuron is responding to the two, whereas it was not responding at all. It responds more to the three and to the five, the six, the seven, the eight most of all, but it's a, a much more graded response. And so again, going back to this notion that we talked about previously, the response of the neuron in real brains is typically much more graded like that and encodes something like how ache-like is the neuron, not necessarily this really high threshold things of saying, oh, I'm only gonna respond when I see an eight and nothing else. And we can look at a plot here that tells us in the green line what the uh, activity is and in the blue line uh, the underlying excitation. And so there still is a threshold. There are certain amounts, certain digits that don't get it over threshold. But then once it gets over threshold, it does sort of convey some overall graded signal about how eight-like the input is. So, so we just had it now respond with this intermediate amount of leak or inhibition and you can see that it responded to the three fairly weakly, then the five more strongly, and then the eight very strongly. You can imagine that maybe having a variety of different such thresholds or kind of selectivity 
of neurons might be beneficial. So some of them respond much more selectively, some of them respond much more broadly, and that allows, that combination allows you to encode information very efficiently. And that's what we think is going on. Our main challenge right now is to understand what are the equations that we can use in the computer to simulate this process of detection. Fundamentally, if you don't learn anything else from this chapter, that's what you should learn. Neurons encode their knowledge through synaptic strengths. This is really fundamentally where knowledge is in the brain. And it's also similarly kind of mind-blowing. Everything you know, every memory, every experience, every thought, in some level boils down to the strength of synapses between your neurons. So, wow, there's a trillions of these things because there's billions of neurons. So as you have a large number of synapses, you have a lot of knowledge 